A few weeks ago, I talked about affliction juicing and why I don't like it. In short, headhunter requirement, single digit FPS, and a few other things were my major issues. So after realizing those problems, I thought to myself, how can I play something in Path of Exile that doesn't have those issues? After wrecking my brain for hours and pondering my orb, I came to the conclusion that I'll just play Torchlight Infinite. <laughs> this is a joke, please. <laughs> Sanctum is exactly what I want, more or less. It doesn't require a headhunter because there aren't really a lot of rare monsters to get a use out of it. On top of that, you have very short loading times because the areas are just much smaller and with barely any enemies on screen, I can actually reach 60 FPS and have good performance. Even though we all know that the brain can only handle like 30 FPS, obviously. With all of this in mind, is Sanctum my new way to farm currency in future leagues? And with what build? To figure this out, I decided to look around and found the content creator Regis, I hope I said that right, and decided to drop a few divines on a new build and see for myself. Before jumping into the build though, let's briefly talk about what Sanctum even is, what the dangers and difficulties are, and why would you even want to run it? I mean, it's obviously loot, but spoiler the forbidden sanctum was the 3.20 expansion back in december 2022 it's a rook like mechanic in which you go through many rooms fight a boss after each floor and after four floors fight the final boss lycia these rooms are filled with unique enemies scourge monsters and usually a bunch of traps Getting hit is going to deplete your resolve, and if you run out of resolve, you lose the run. If you find wells, you can recover some resolve, but never above your current maximum. These wells cost a tiny amount of Aureus coins. Speaking of Aureus coins, they can be collected after defeating enemies or drop out of chests. You can also get boons, but also afflictions, which are good and bad passives respectively. You can also... Wait... Why am I showing Curse of the Dead Gods gameplay? Anyhow, you can also buy boons and recover resolve from Divinia, the Sanctum NPC, which can appear during your runs. Now the Forbidden Sanctum got added to the core game in 3.22, and Divinia can now be found in Act 10, which allows you to visit the Sanctum and run Forbidden Tomes, which are itemized sanctums. You can also find relics, which you slot in and out between your runs. They offer a wide variety of modifiers to make your runs easier. I think you get the gist now what Sanctum even is, if you have never played it before. Well, one thing is missing, which is loot. This is one major thing why I like Sanctum, and some players might not like that. I like getting raw currency as a reward. Getting loot or rewards in Sanctum is quite simple. Some rooms have rewards afterwards that let you choose from three options. You can either decide to get the reward now, get it at the end of the floor, or at the end of the sanctum. Usually the best loot is the one that you have to defer until the end of the run, if you can get there. Simple, straight to the point, but also high risk and high reward, because if you die, you lose all the loot. Moving on, let's talk about the builds. Builds really matter when farming a certain type of content. For example, doing Legion with a closed combat melee skill like Earthquake probably wouldn't work as well as with Tornado Shot and shooting 10 projectiles a second. For Sanctum, you would need a very strong single target skill to get rid of the enemies quickly so you don't get hit and lose resolve. You also don't want to waste time and want to quickly proceed to the next room. The more single target DPS you have, the faster you can finish the room and hopefully a run. This will massively improve how many runs you can do in an hour and therefore how many divines you can make. Now that we're up to date, what Sanctum even is, what the dangers are and what a build needs to do, what is the skill? The main skill is Penance Brand of Dissipation, which is an incredibly strong Transfigure gem and I spend around 10 to 20 divines to get the build going because I don't like jumping into it with a 50 to 100 divine budget. It's a total glass cannon, so I highly recommend not doing this build if you want to win every single Sanctum 
and also suck at doing gameplay mechanics. Still, I want to talk about it because it was something completely different compared to the generic Legion farming strat I usually do. It's just awesome right-clicking the enemy and seeing its health melt away. This also works with Uber bosses, which is kind of insane. It feels like I'm committing a crime here. Should Ubers really be that easy? <laughs> Let me give you a brief overview of the build because I have a little surprise uh, in the next section of the video. This is an occultist power charge stacker with penance brand of dissipation. It's a total glass cannon with barely 2.7k life, a measly 7.1k effective hit pool, and any fizz hit above 3.7k will delete it from Rayclast. The build roughly revolves around these unique items. We got Void Battery and Malachi's Loop to give us more max power charges on top of a bunch of more spell damage. Then we have Diala's Malefaction to give our Penance Brand skill another plus two levels, so it does more damage. Rallakesh's Impatience is totally not busted and will definitely not get nerfed, and makes us think we have max charges all the time. Batch of the Brotherhood gives us max frenzy charges equal to our power charges, and then we got two Call of the Brotherhood, which converts our lightning damage to cold, and thanks to big chunky hits, we actually freeze the enemies, or at least chill them. And for context, Penance Brand is actually a physical skill, but we convert some of it to lightning which then converts to cold. The build also has a timeless jewel and a watcher's eye and the forbidden flame and flesh jewel combo. They are great but weren't in the initial like budget build in quotes. You can also have specters which I didn't do for a long time but are very helpful and will give a nice boost in damage. As mentioned at the start this all came from the youtuber Rejish and he recommends perfect pain artist and the naval office of specters. But this is my build here and I really can't stand the tidal wave animation. It's way too much so I just chose perfect pain artist and left it at that. And here is where the video would have stopped but I felt this video was missing something. It felt incomplete, like it just wasn't good enough. I looked for an alternative. Shockwave totems. I have never played that skill, nor am I a big totem enjoyer. But it may be possible to have a sanctum runner from day one onward without some respecking and gem swapping shenanigans. I played through the entire story without leveling gear or unique items and only used the currency I got from playing this character. You can imagine a leak start. I'm going to break the fourth wall here and look at my notes because, you know, it's a lot. So first off, I started with Holy Flame Totem, which was clearly not the fastest leveling option, but usable. I then swapped to Shockwave Totem in Act 3 and instantly noticed that it sucks to play. It really sucks because it has such a small AoE. Like if I didn't perfectly position my totems, the monsters just wouldn't take damage and it felt really awkward. But if it hit, my god, the damage was solid. Well, up to a certain level at least. I thankfully did get a plus one scepter and had a plus one shield from earlier, so I, I somewhat stayed ahead of the curve, but it wasn't the best. And I'm ping-ponging around here from good to bad to good to bad, but this is actually what it felt like to play. And then it went to bad again because the stupid knockback knocks the bosses away from your totems, which deal the damage. It's like, oh yeah, let me put all my totems around the enemy and then you push it further and further away so you don't do full damage anymore. Thankfully, I got some chaos going when I started mapping and I got the Astra Projector Unique Ring, which makes the Nova totems or all Nova totems hit the enemy directly instead of just hitting around itself, like around the totem. Much better because it, you know, actually focuses the damage on the enemy and actually kills the enemies somewhat quicker, but it also reduces the AoE, so you barely hit more than three enemies sometimes. But the focus was Sanctum, so how was it? Well, you can probably see on screen right now, do I need to say more? <laughs> Obviously, the skill isn't properly leveled. I still have one ascendancy left. Items are whack and so on. But if I had to play Sanctum with this, I don't think it would work. Now, let's say you enjoy the totem playstyle. You don't mind the knockback. 
and the damage seems fine to you. Could you go Shockwave Totem, map with it for many, many hours, level yourself up, get some gear, and then get into Sanctum? Yes, I can totally see that working out. If the price for a Forbidden Tome is low enough, like 20c or less, and you finish Floor 3 consistently, you might be able to get more out of it than you put in, early in the league and snowball yourself up. But that seems way riskier than playing an actual good build outside of Sanctum and then doing Shockwave Totem with some investment. Still, it was fun to test it out and I hope you gained some insight from all of this. Please, I beg you, it took me 11 hours to level this character. <laughs> Now, before I finish this video, let's briefly talk about relics, right? Because they are a thing in Sanctum, and I hear a lot of content creators, not to call anyone out here, to always say, oh, you gotta get the good relics, you gotta farm some relics. So I'll, I'll leave you with this. If you learn the mechanics a bit and got an actual good Sanctum build that can one-shot enemies in less than a second, do you really think you would need a relic that gives you 10 resolve and some inspiration every once in a while? No, is the answer. You don't need relics. This build I'm showing right now did Sanctum without relics. I tested it. It's totally fine. Obviously, it's a bit riskier. You gotta learn the mechanics. Maybe don't get hit by every trap. But relics aren't that important. A really good, solid Sanctum runner, a good build, is the top priority. With this, I hope I showed you one or two fun Sanctum builds to try it yourself. If you got a better Sanctum build, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe, like the many, many awesome people that did in the past month like jesus christ <laughs> and don't forget to stay hydrated gamers